Welcome back to AZ Astro. So, <clears throat> uh, obviously I don't have my room that I usually film in anymore. We have a guest who is taking up that uh, room till further notice. So I'll be recording in my little tiny area on my bed. Uh, so, as you guys know, last weekend I went camping. That was absolutely fun. Unfortunately, I didn't get any images. Uh, the first night that I went, it... I was just so exhausted, we all ended up passing out at about 9 p.m. Second night, nothing but thunderstorms, rain. Uh, the entire next day, nothing but thunderstorms and rain. That whole night, nothing but thunderstorms and rain. So basically, it was a wash for the whole camping trip, which, I mean, that's okay. It, I loved it. Elliot certainly loved it. The rain didn't bother him one bit. He loved that. He was out there playing in it. Uh, so I thought I would do this video. I got some uh, new stuff for my telescope. Uh, one of the things I got, you can probably see right here, is I got the new Eagle. This is the Prima Luce Lab. I believe it's Prima Luce Lab. Uh, Prima Luce Lab Eagle LE. So it's the, their cheapest one. I just I can't justify $2,100 for a three-year out-of-date computer, honestly. So I went with their cheapest option, which was still $845, but I'll get over it. Anyway, I've already got, got it set up for the mount for my uh, EQ6R Pro. And then I put this on top of it so that I can mount a telescope on top of that. So that's where my telescope will mount. Um, this is as far as I've gone. I have not hooked it up. I, it has not seen any power at all whatsoever. So tonight will be the first time that I've used it. I assume I need to download all my drivers and software, which is fine. Uh, but you guys will see its performance uh, later on in the video when I start imaging. So I got that. And that's the LE, Prima Luce Lab Eagle LE. It basically has, it's, it's basically a eagle 4 pro but with half the ram a two or 128 gig hard drive i believe it is and a dual core processor instead of a four core processor and honestly if i really really wanted to i could break this open and i could throw in another stick of ram and bump this all the way up to 16 gigs if i want i could throw in a two terabyte ssd into it if i want and then the only difference would be is it doesn't have the eye attachment that the Pro Pro 4 has. But honestly, it's just going to be used on my permanent mount in the city. And I already know the seeing conditions are crap. I don't need a, you know, an eyeball to tell me that it's crap. <laughs> so that was not something I was really interested in. And then, uh, which would make really the only difference between the Pro and this one is that I believe the Pro has a four core processor in it which i mean honestly yeah it would speed it up a little bit but not it it, it doesn't speed it up to the point where it's worth an additional like 1800 or like 1400 dollars for a quad core processor it's just that's just too rich for my blood but that's just me anyway so that's the prima luce eagle le i'll put that over here try not to bother elliot here I'm recording on his bed, and he's not too happy about it, but that's okay. He did really good camping on his first camping trip. I uh, put him on a 50-foot lead. He only chewed through the lead once, which is a little annoying, and he uh, chewed up the power cable for my air mattress pump, which was also a little annoying. Fortunately, both of them can be fixed, and I think I'll get a, a chain next time, something he can't chew through. But he did a great job camping. He's going to be a good camping dog. And along with my Eagle LE, uh, I went ahead and I springed for, I think this was $150 for the power brick, which is the output 12 volts at 15 amps, 180 watts max. Uh, so I found out that if I wanted to run everything that I'm running, I would most likely need this really big, beefy, power block and I mean this thing is a couple pounds at least so it's fairly heavy so I bought the power block and then this is the power cable for the power block but I also got some other cords 
So like this one, for instance, is for my Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. So that's the power cable for that. So as you know, the Prima Luce Lab Eagle LE, you're able to power everything through the actual computer as opposed to having to plug each thing in individually on a power strip. So I got all the cables I need, the three volt cables, which are these, and then the eight volt or three amp cables, sorry. And then the eight amp cables, I got three three volts. Let's see, that's three volt. Wait, what is this? Oh, this is the power cable, sorry, for my Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. And then these, I got two. I got two of the eight amp and two of the three amp. I can't tell right off. I think these are the eight amp, these are the three amp. I don't know, it doesn't matter. I'll figure out when I plug everything in. But those are all the cables and everything for the Eagle. Put those back here. And then the last thing that I am arguably the most excited about are these. So these, if you guys can't tell, it says Chroma. I decided that since I had the money, uh, the filters that I've been working with, these are filters, uh, and the ones that I've been working with on my telescopes uh, have been really cheap. Uh, LRGB set, I spent like, I think $125 for the whole set. Uh, and they're just run-of-the-mill cheapest ones you can buy. The uh, narrowband set that I had were 12 nanometer narrowband sets. Yes, yeah, he wants to say hi. Say hi, Elliot. Say hi. Uh, so the filters I've been using are 12, na nano na 12 nanometer. Yes, hi. They're 12 nanometer, and they just haven't been giving me the results that I want. So I ordered these filters about three months ago. I got all the filters except the Oxygen 3 and the green filter, or blue filter, sorry, uh, from Chroma about a month and a half ago. They were behind on all the other filters. So I told them, well, just send me what you've got and then send the other ones later. Well, I just got the other two filters uh, yesterday. So now I can finally put them in my telescope and see just how much better three nanometer is. So what's really nice is it comes in these, this box that has these two little clips that you can bend down so you can't open it and spill them everywhere. But uh, I had also bought a Chroma low glow pollution filter that I've actually been using and it's gotten me really good results so far. So These are the filters. They come in these little paper baggy type things. So that is the luminance filter. This is the green filter. This is the blue filter. And then where's the red? Here's the red. Those are the red filters. So that's the LRGB set. Uh, I already opened the luminance one and see what it looks like. And basically they're uh, 1.25 inch um, thread mounted. I opted to go for the thread mounted because it's just easier to work with. But that's the luminance filter and they basically all look like this. But they all come in bags so I'll be installing those into my, into my uh, filter wheel. And then I got the O3 filter, S2 filter, and the H alpha filter. Now, each one of these filters were $575 each. So I really, really, really went way down the rabbit hole on these ones, but that's okay. Uh, so here is the H alpha filter. And as you can see, I mean, if I put this up to the camera like this, I mean, you can't, you can't see. Yeah, there you go. So everything's red like that, which is a really cool effect if you ask me. But that's the idea of these filters. And they seem to be very high quality, so I'll be installing those into my filter wheel. So those are the uh, toys that I've gotten so far. I'll be installing all of them. Uh, you guys will see the Eagle LE on the mount, because uh, I'm going to do a time lapse of me setting everything up on the mount. Uh, and you guys will see what that looks like. And then uh, you guys will see me imaging tonight. So I will see you guys later in the video.
Okay, so tonight, I think I'm gonna try my hand at a nebula that I've never tried to capture before. Helix Nebula, which at the moment, hi buddy. Hi, yeah, you wanna be in the video, huh? So Helix Nebula at the moment is about behind this tree right here, big tree in the back. Sorry about all the birds. Apparently there's a billion of them in a tree that's over there. So sorry about that noise, but nothing I can do about that. Uh, so I'm gonna be doing Helix Nebula uh, I've never captured Helix Nebula. I just, I, I've heard about it, but I just decided uh, yesterday that I was going to give it a try because I've never, never pointed my telescope at it. Uh, one of the problems I do foresee is I am going to have to compete with these power lines that are running under here or running over the alleyway right here. There's always, I'm, I'm screwed in both directions when, when it comes to power lines. It's incredible but uh, I will do what I can to work that out. So I got everything all hooked up. It's a rat's nest of wires right now, but I'm still working out the wire situation and I'll get it all bundled up and everything because most of it's riding on here, except, you know, this wire right here for the mount and then this wire right here for the pull master. But everything else I can, all the other wires with the exception of the power wire I can actually all bundle up like right here or something and have them all nice and neat and everything, but I'm not worrying about that right now. But uh, I will see you guys in at the computer when the sun goes the rest of the way down. All right, so here's the first five minute image in hydrogen alpha of the Helix Nebula. I think it looks really good. Uh, I did a test shot in hydrogen alpha, oxygen three and sulfur two. I found that the hydrogen alpha and oxygen three are the two filters that give me the most of the actual nebula. Sulfur two, there was not a whole lot. Um, there is, I do have a problem. It's it's not here anymore, but there's a power line right there. And I don't know how long I'm going to have to image this before more power lines appear on this side. So I'm going to image for as long as I can. Uh, as you guys know, I got power lines in the front of my of my yard that just block the whole northern hemisphere, make uh, Polaris really hard to image, or not image, but to, to polar line. I've got the same amount of lines in the back of my yard, and this Helix Nebula goes above the power lines for a short time, but then dips back into the power lines. And there's some time between the power lines that I can get images. But I'll probably be able to get all the hydrogen alphas and some of the oxygen threes. We'll see how that works uh, with the end image. As far as sulfur two, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that. It, it might take me a couple nights to be able to get the full image. But we'll, I'll find out about that later. Um... The uh, Eagle, I have been using the Eagle. Really, really nice setup. I love how it shows you the wattage, the power consumption. Uh, I All I have hooked into it are my, my four USB slots, which are the A, B, C, and D right there. And then the power, which is the mount, the QHY, CCD, and the focuser. But it shows you how many amps each one is using, which I love, and tells you the amount of wattage that you're using. So that's... Really good setup. I like it so far. Uh, but we'll see what I get at the end of the video. I have done some images on Pleiades, but it was just too zoomed in. So I need to get to a dark sky site so I can set up my Hyperstar 6 to get Pleiades so I can get all of Pleiades in the image. Uh, also, the filters that I'm using, the Hydrogen Alpha, Oxygen 3, and Sulfur 2 filters are actually the three nanometer chroma filters. So we're gonna see how good that is. So far, I'm loving it. Uh, I've taken some oxygen three images and usually with the really big stars, they've got like this halo around them. I'm not seeing that with these chroma three nanometer. So I'm really excited about how good these images are gonna come out. Uh, as you can also see, my guiding is uh, 1.81, which is absolute garbage. I assume that it is because the moon is almost completely full, so I'm battling the moon right now. 
The seeing conditions aren't that great, so I'm not expecting a whole lot from this image. But we'll see what we get. And uh, if anything out of the ordinary happens, I'll come back on and I'll show you guys what's going on. But uh, I'll see you guys at the end of the video with the final image. I'm hoping it's one of the best images I've ever taken. And I have a feeling it will be because just this one frame looks awesome. So I will see you guys at the end of the video.